もしやコスモではコスモ needs me free コスモ AP ラミデュアリースポーツ Welcome once again to my 76 Mazda Cosmo restoration. Last episode, we began the、uh, installation of the water to air intercooler by mounting the major components the intercooler, the heat exchanger, etc., etc. And we're going to finish the installation this episode by plumbing the system,、uh, making some mounting brackets, and wiring it up. So let's get right to it. The water pump will be on the underside of the inner fender. So, in order to figure out its position, I just need to mark roughly where this fitting is、uh, going to emerge from the tank. Well, my brilliant. Bloody plan was to mount the pump something like this. But as soon as I got this fitting into the wheel well, I、uh, figured out that wouldn't work. It sticks in way too far, and there is basically a 100% chance of the wheel smashing into it. So I've decided instead to mount the pump vertically on this front bulkhead. I've already measured. Um, so now I have an unnecessary hole to weld up on my inner fender, and I have to add another bung to my tank. But you've seen me make plenty of sheet metal repairs and weld plenty of bungs. So, next scene, that work will be done. The feed to the pump has been relocated to the front of the tank, and I've already drilled the appropriate hole in the body. Now I just need to mark. And trim the hose. Now, I would have much rather used braided line versus this still massive overkill for the application silicone line, but unfortunately, the pump has a nipple, not a fitting, so this is the only type of hose that will mate to it with a hose clamp. However, this Socketless fitting grips amazingly. I put it on off camera and I tried to pull it off so I could put it back on on camera. It is tight. I think I'll be okay because these bars are sharp and cupped. So, just install this and get to mounting the pump. And yes, this is going to be a major pain in the ass to get to when the headlights are back in the car. Pretty well, though. The pump needs a bracket, which I'll make out of this aluminum plate. So I will just make a few basic marks and move it over to the bench. I've、uh, traced out a T shaped bracket, and you'll see why it's T shaped once I、uh, mount the pump. Oh, these markers. It's like you use them twice and then they don't work anymore. Before I cut this out, I'll just drill the mounting holes. A lot easier to clamp down to the drill press table、uh, before it's cut out. Now, this is a 5 mm i cap drill that I'm using to bore the pump mounting hole. Very carefully. Now, just a little bit of smoothening with the file. Knock down some of those saw marks. 
And the reason I used a tap drill on these two holes is so I can tap them to M6. That's also one of the reasons why this bracket is so thick. Uh, I can't put a bolt on the other side because the top hole um, has to uh, butt right up against the uh, bulkhead on the car. Oop. We are now through. And back out. So here's how it all goes together. The uh, pump mounting hardware just bolts to the uh, bracket. And then the pump slides into the assembly. And that gets bolted to the car. It's about where the pump needs to mount. So, mark some holes. Now the pump just bolts right in, ideally. Got to use a bit of the old Vaseline to lube up the old nipple here. And then slide the hose on. Hopefully the Vaseline will allow me to uh, remove this later. Yeah, not bad. That's completely the wrong orientation now. That's better. Now this fitting's a little bit tricky to access, but everything does fit very well. There we go. There has to be some way for that pumped water to get back into the engine bay to feed the intercooler. So I'll use this bulkhead fitting to send it through the bottom of the inner fender. Made a hole. Well, I made my hole just a little big probably should have used the uh, Univit instead of the whole saw. So I'll just have to be very careful on final assembly uh, in which position I tighten this down so you don't see the gap. I found out that these barbed fittings are basically for life. Once the hose is on, it locks into the barbs. Okay, nipple is lubed, as is the hose, so just make the connection, then I can get the hell out of this wheel well. Now obviously I'll put some clamps on all of these joints uh, once I uh, do the final assembly, but right now it's fine for mock-up. Time for the plumbing to begin, which starts by screwing some half inch NPT to dash 10 adapters into the uh, intercooler. I'm just going to snug them in for now. I'm not going to completely tighten them down because I will probably end up having to uh, adjust their orientation a little. And of course, everything has to uh, come apart again for paint and etc. So. No point uh, cranking these suckers down. Well, we got to get the water lines to the heat exchanger, so time to uh, Swiss cheese this radiator support a little more. The uh, 
heat exchanger gets a pair of half inch NPT to dash 10 uh, AN adapters and because I don't see the need for these to come out of the uh, heat exchanger once installed they're getting some uh, Teflon tape to seal them up I guess I could also use pipe dope for this, but Teflon tape is uh, less messy. Just put a backup wrench on there to support the fitting while I crank down on this thing. I can start the actual plumbing now. I'm using Russell Pro Classic Hose because, well, it's black and looks good and the vinyl covering doesn't abrade everything like stainless does. So to assemble these uh, hoses and the and fittings, first you just remove the socket from the, uh, the fitting and then twist it onto the hose counterclockwise and it will begin to screw down onto the hose fairly tightly and it can take a considerable amount of effort to do. I do not have a set of AN wrenches so I usually just put a bit of tape in the vise and clamp it in there. It's really important to lube these fittings up a little bit of oil on here. And then just get her started and screw it in. If you're using a non AN wrench, just be very careful not to mess the anodizing up. And just watch so that your hose doesn't push out very far, more than about a sixteenth of an inch. And once the fitting is tightened down to the socket, it's all done. Okay, I realized something stupid. My holes are not big enough to pass the fittings through. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't complain about such a tight hole, but I can't even push into this one. So, she needs to be reamed out a little. Okay, a little bit of uh, duct tape on the hole prevents me from abrading my hose. Obviously, I will install proper grommets uh, once uh, I'm out of the mock-up phase. Not bad at all. Now this hose is just rubber and cloth, so it's actually fairly easily cuttable by a uh, razor knife. And you'll notice that I have wrapped some electrical tape around the end to keep the uh, cloth braid from going poof and unraveling as soon as I uh, make the cut. Well that's the first line made. I just have to uh, do two more and the plumbing will be complete. Hopefully she still fits. The lower
lower hose was assembled in exactly the same way as the upper hose. So what famous British slash American race car does this remind you of? And the top fitting is just a straight fitting. This is the water outlet uh, of the intercooler which is being plumbed to the bottom of the uh, heat exchanger. So hopefully any air bubbles that become trapped leave, exit the top of the heat exchanger and end up back in the tank. So the system should be self-degassing. I saved this hose for last because I can't figure out a non-sucky way of doing this. These fittings are way too close together to just send a hose straight from one to the other because there's a minimum bend radius of this stuff before it collapses. So unfortunately, I have to put this loop in the hose to avoid the collapse and remember that the engine is going to move back and forth on its mount. So I can't just change the fitting and go straight from one to the other. Okay, just mark it with a little bit of tape. Well, I just hope that people don't consider the music that's playing right now to be my musical tastes. <laughs> I can put it on the radio. I hate spot rolling. Permanent. It rusts. We don't care. <laughs> I care. I just rebuilt half the car out of sheet metal. Well, the company makes profit. <laughs> I will never be happy with the way this hose sits, but my space here and my options are limited. Maybe in the future I'll have some kind of brainwave and figure out a much more elegant way of doing this, but for now it has a lot of extra length on it and that's just the way it is. With the hoses done, that actually finishes all of the plumbing so I can reassemble the rad and everything onto the front of the car. There's a fair amount of weight on these pipes, you know, with that heavy water-filled intercooler, so I'm going to make some brackets to support them. Um, this is a Series 4 NA RX-7 air pump bracket, which is designed to bolt right here, so I think I'll use that as my starting point. Like the countless flanges I've made before this one, it always starts with marking out the bolt holes and center punching them I think this one inch square C channel will make a fairly good bracket. So, I think I need to take half inch plus an eight. That's about what I'm going for right there. Guessing I need to cut, I don't know, here. Sweet jumping low hand. I actually got that on the first cut. And the reason that I chose what is pretty ugly C channel is because I think that if I rip it in the bandsaw at an angle, it'll look pretty awesome.
I think that worked out kind of well. Looks pretty cool. Better than just a straight silly bracket. Okay, one quick tack on that and I'll check the fitment on the car again. It matches up to the pipe pretty well, but I don't like how it looks kind of crooked in the engine bay, so hopefully I can tweak this tack a little. Straighten it out. That is straight up and down and looks so much better. So that's the position I will weld it into. figure out how to weld that tab onto the uh, intercooler pipe while this is in the car. Oh yeah, I bet the chances of this working are about as high as the chances of Lindsay Lohan's gynecologist not washing his hands before a meal. Holy shit! It worked! just to be able to put the whole thing back on and hope everything still fits. Yeah, we're looking pretty good so far. A bit of adjustment on all of these couplers. And, yep. Make sure it fits. Gonna try to make the next bracket look much like the first, except this time it has to come off the power steering mount and clear the belt. So I'm gonna weld this to the bottom, which will bolt to the mount. Uh, obviously, I have to drill and tap a hole. Cut this at a little bit of an angle. So now the bracket will actually sit straight up and down, which will look about a zillion times better. before I weld it again. Yeah, yeah, no, it's nasty. <laughs> okay. This is thick enough that I was able to drill it 
and tap it for M6 by 1.0. I just have to go really carefully because I kind of only have one chance at this. If I screw it up, I forever have to struggle with putting a nut on the other side. The next piece is cut exactly the same as the first bracket I made, so I'll just weld it together. Okay, just drilling a hole for the uh, tab that will mount it to the uh, intercooler piping. I trim this a little bit to remove some of the nasty sharp edges. And once it's bolted back into place, just like the other one, the tab gets welded on to the intercooler pipe. Well, with all the brackets finally welded on, and I refuse to admit how long it took me to make these simple brackets, I can put the intercooler piping back on for the last time. There is a distinct order in which all of this has to be installed. So, when I'm long dead, somebody else is working on the car, it's going to give them brain aneurysms trying to figure it out. intercooler is now self-supporting. Well, the last step is to wire up the pump. So I'm just pulling out a power wire, a spare injector output from the MS3 Pro to switch the relay, and also an analog input to the MS3 Pro as well as the ground because I have the temperature sensor on the tank. Really the last step in this installation is to just wire the pump up. So I'm using one of the spare uh, injector outputs, injector G on the MS3 Pro to uh, switch the relay and that just gets connected like any other relay. The uh, spare output to one side of the coil, which I'm soldering now, the other side of the coil to uh, switch to 12 volts. And this is the uh, connection to one side of the relay contacts, which connects to the thicker 12-gauge uh, constant 12-volt connection from the uh, fuse box. This will, of course, power the pump. And as you've seen me uh, do in the past, of course, all of my solder joints get a uh, healthy cleaning with uh, flux remover. Get rid of that corrosive solder flux so it doesn't wick back into the wire and start eating away the copper. Okay, with all the connections made, I can just cram these relays and the ever-increasing amount of harness back into the car. In this stock hole where I guess the turn signal and marker light harness pass through is perfect for me to run the uh, power wire to the pump. So, and then of course the ground wire will just follow the same route.
That basically completes the exterior portion of the pump wiring. And obviously this will all be loomed up and tied up appropriately once I do the uh, final harnessing of the car. The temperature sensor just got connected to spare analog input 2 and ground, which then is plugged into the uh, sensor. And I forgot to mention that I grounded the pump to the same uh, set of grounds as the fans. The black sensor ground wire needs to get spliced into the uh, sensor ground uh, black and white wire of the MS3 Pro harness. Now in order to properly bias the uh, spare analog input for the temperature sensor, I need to connect a uh, 2.5K, actually 2.49K resistor between the analog input and the 5 volt line to the TPS. I, I honestly haven't thought of a really good way to do this other than just kind of jamming it in the harness and splicing it between the two wires. Just cover the resistor with heat shrink. Then just uh, solder the other side of the resistor to the 5 volt TPS reference wire. Uh, just through a little slit in the insulation. Uh, clean off the flux. Now normally I would of course heat shrink this and make it all weatherproof but since I can't get heat shrink onto the wire uh, and it is in the middle of the harness on the inside of the car I'm just going to uh, put some tape over it and uh, it should be okay. There's one final connection to be made and that is the fixed 12 volt 12 gauge power wire to the pump rather to the relay. So a little bit of dielectric grease in the connector. Give it a crimp. Then that can be connected directly to the fuse panel. At this point, the water-to-air intercooler installation is done. All that remains is to test uh, the wiring for the pump and the temperature sensor. So I have my laptop hooked up, the uh, MS3 Pro hooked up to the battery, and let's turn it on. Looking at the gauges, it appears that my water tank uh, temp sensor is working fine. There's the gauge there labeled water to air tank temp, and it's reading 18 degrees. Next, uh, I can test the pump by going into the programmable I.O. and we'll scroll down to injector G. Turn that on. And if we turn the power on value, turn the active value to on. And then we turn it back off. Looks like the pump works. We're all done. Thus ends this episode. Um, you may have noticed that I haven't built a bracket for the actual intercooler yet, um, mainly because I'm just not sure about the power steering pump, so I figured yeah, I'll leave that until I know for sure and I don't have to rebuild the bracket. What's up for next episode? Well, I'm glad to say that the uh, large mechanical tasks with the engine are almost over. So I think uh, we'll probably tackle the uh, fuel system.